my lesson for October the 4th, 2015, Lesson 5, Unit 2, Giving Bold Testimony. Our lesson title is The Source of True Power. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 5 through 15. And our background scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 9 through 25. And our printed passage is chapter 8 of Acts, verses 9 through 24. And our key verse, Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. Acts 8.22 our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson is that the students should be able to recall the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ and reveal the power of the Holy Spirit. Point two, affirm the necessity of being right with God in order to receive spiritual power from God. And also, decide and act on witness to others about the power of the Holy Spirit, the source of true power. We have to understand our lesson background is that just before ascending to heaven, the Lord Jesus told the apostles that they were to testify about him in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the verse. You found that in Acts 1, 8. In the book of Acts, chapter 2 through 7 covers the first stage of the plan of the Great Commission as the apostle took the lead in proclaiming Christ in Jerusalem. The result was that thousands accepted Jesus as Messiah. During this time, two non-apostles by the name of Stephens and Philip rose to prominence as spiritual field leaders. Initially, these two were included in the group of seven appointed to manage the church benevolent ministries. In other words, they were the appointed deacons. Both also were were active evangelists, and this work led to persecution. Stephen, death by stoning, and Philip, the departure from Jerusalem. These circumstances resulted in Philip being a key figure in the spread of the gospel. Leaving Jerusalem, he went down to the city of Samaria. We find that in Acts 8, 5 where he found a receptive audience. Since the death of King Solomon in about 913 B.C., the tribes of Israel had been divided into two groups, with the ten northern tribes following kings who eventually ruled in the city of, of Samaria. The rift between the two groups, the northern tribes and and the southern tribes widened after many years, and, and the northern tribes were taken into exile by the Assyrians in 1022 B.C., and the territory was recolonized with non-Israelites. That situation resulted in intermarriage, leading pure brother Jews to view their Sumerian neighbors as spiritually and racially impure. Looking past historical difference, Philip followed the example of Jesus in the outreach to the Samaritan, which could be found in the first I mean John the fourth chapter verses one through forty four. Philip message was confirmed with miraculous displays of power that included exorcism and healing. Through the power of Christ, the long-awaited Messianic age has finally came even to, to the Samaritans. So we find in our lesson where we take up in 
verse 9 of our lesson, it says that, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and berished the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was a great one. There was a certain man called Simon. Simon had been in Samaria for some time, a long time, in this city using sorcery. He gave out that he himself was some great one and would have all the people there to believe so and to pay him great respect. Now, Simon had no desire to reform their lives, nor to improve their worship or devotion, but only to make them believe that he was some divine purpose, and therefore, by using them to his advantage. We find in verses 8, in verses uh, 10 through 11, it says that, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because of that long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. They all gave heed to him from the least to the greatest, both young and old. Oh, both poor and rich, to him they had great regard because they said that he was a man who displayed the power of God, that great power. And they were brought to this conclusion by his sorcery. That is, that he bewitched them with sorcery by his magic arts and tricks, he bewitched the minds of the people, at least some of them, to think that he was such a wonderful God-sent man. And so, by his many signs and lying wonders, he seemed to be really what they were looking for. They were his power was like those magicians that was in Egypt. Y'all remember the story when, when, when Moses came to Pharaoh and he said, told Pharaoh that God said, let his people go. And that when Moses threw his rod on the floor and it turned it into a serpent, some of Pharaoh's magicians, they were able to imitate some of the miracles that Moses did. And so that's why there is, it is no great, great thing because we have to be aware that Satan is also able to imitate some of the things of God. For, for we find in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9 which says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders that that he would be able to do the things to imitate the things of God. But we find in verses 12 and 13 of our lesson is that but when these people but when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ they was baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done, which were done by Philip. When they believed Philip, preaching things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. When they, the people, knew no better, 
they was influenced by Simon's sorcery. But then when they were acquainted with the real message of Jesus Christ and the real miracles of God by the Holy Spirit, they saw plainly that the one was real and the other one was a sham. And that is even today. Many are fooled and beguiled running after wonders and miracles. We we run for the excitement to be to be what's the word I want you we 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 are tricked into believing. We be looking for the miraculous. And so Satan is ready to do this. So we need to be aware that that God warns us uh, about this in Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 14 and 15, which says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who in shall be according to their works. And also we find in First, First John chapter 4 and verse 1 says that, Beloved, believe not every spirit. But test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets has gone out into the world. Satan knows that mankind wants to be entertained. Mankind he wants to be ooh and ah and 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 he and he's fascinated by the miraculous. But we need to test the spirits to see if they are of God. So many times we hear people, they constantly talking about the, the blessings, the blessings, the blessings, the blessings of God. But how many times do they talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the gospel of Jesus Christ is, that, is how that he died for our sins according to the scriptures and how that he was buried and that he rose the third day according to the scriptures and that and that how that his death paid our sin debt and that the good news of that gospel is that Jesus is coming back to take us home to be where he is that we are just pilgrims passing through and that we should set our affection on things above and not on things of this earth. So so we have to be aware of this instead of looking, looking for miracles and things of this world, but are we looking for our blessed hope to appear from heaven? So we have to be aware of these false prophets promising us, promising us gold, glitter, diamonds, bingles, and, and things like that instead of giving us the plain word of God. It's also talking about how that how we should have the strong power of the Holy Spirit is is that those that is laid captive by Satan were brought into obedience to Christ. We see how that those people that they were deceived, but once they heard the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ through Philip, that they was delivered from, from the bondage and the tricks of the devil into the liberty of Jesus Christ. And so those whom Simon had bewitched were brought to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is said that the gospel is a gospel of liberation. Jesus said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That that he was sent to do what? To open the eyes of the blind and to set the captives free. To, to free us from the penalty of death. And also 
to free us from the from the enslavement of the flesh and Satan. Verse 13 of our lesson says that Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. Simon himself believed. Simon, he was convinced that Philip preached the true doctrine because he saw it confirmed by real miracles of which Simon himself was better able to judge because he was conscious. He knew all the tricks of all the false ones of the ones that he pretended to do. Simon, he was baptized. He was admitted as others believers were into the church. And he wondered, beholding the miracles, that present conviction was wrought and kept up by the miracle. He stayed with Philip because he was amazed and see the power that Philip really possessed. Many people are come to the Lord in an emotional state for the emotion, but once the emotions have settled, then many would turn and walk away because the miracles seem to cease. So so Simon, he was held there because he seen the miracles that Philip was doing and he was impressed by them. So we find in our lesson, verses 14 through 17, as it states, Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Simon had received, excuse me, heard that the Sumerians, had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they would come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had see, received the word of God, they heard that how that God had wonderfully blessed Philip in his work as an evangelist at Samaria. But they had, but there was some power that Philip, I mean, that was reserved for the apostles. Philip was an evangelist. An evangelist simply gave the message, and his message was the gospel of Jesus Christ. The apostles, they were appointed. They were appointed and directly appointed by the resurrected Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, and and he gave to them as proof of their appointment and the authority that they were sent by him. He gave them power to heal the sick, to raise to dead, to 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 give sight to the blind. So these were they credentials that they was authentically representing the Lord Jesus Christ. So after Philip had, the evangelist had gave the message, the apostles came to authenticate that the message that Philip gave was true. And so Peter and John was sent to encourage Philip in what he had did and also to assist and strengthen his hand to work with him in unison in the endeavor of carrying out the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also to bestow spiritual gifts upon those that believe. 
verse 11 says that only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though none of them were endowed with the gifts of tongues, which at that time has seemed to be the usual immediate effect of the pouring out of the Spirit. They were so happy and engaged in Christ Jesus and, and, and interested and entrusted in Him, which is the only necessary thing that it is for salvation is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to, to confess with their mouth and die, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so this is what they had done. They received the message and they believed it, but they did not have any outward sign of the Holy Spirit uh, by speaking in tongues. And understand this now, when they were talking about speaking in unknown tongues, this was in a in a different dialect, a, a tongue, a language that they did not formally speak. Because if you would go to the second chapter of Acts on the day of Pentecost, where it said that when the, the apostles spoke in those tongues, that there was Jews gathered from all over the, the known world at that time, and they was there to celebrate. And when Peter preached to them that they heard him, in their own language that they understood what the message that he presented. And so now we sometimes fall up under the fallacy that the speaking in tongues is that it, it, it is is something that somebody cannot understand. No. At this time this tongue that they're talking about is a different dialect, a different language that they were speaking so that it would be a verification that it was by the power of the Spirit. And so at this time, these people in, in Samaria, they only had the joy of their salvation and no outward side, sign of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now understand this, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are given to the body of Christ, not as for promotion of individual. They are giving so that the body of Christ might be edified, that the body of Christ might be strengthened. They are not giving for an individual's own glory, but it's so that, so that the body could be strengthened, that the body and that Christ might be glorified through the body of Christ, his church. And so so we see that they they had only the joy and the, the joy and satisfaction of their salvation. Those that are indeed surrendered to Christ and have experienced the sanctifying influence and operation of the Spirit of Grace, we have reason to be thankful and no reason to Complain if we do not possess any outward sign of spiritual gift that some might think that we should have or that is for sure. So we should be just be thankful and joyous with the mind of knowing that in the presence and the peace of knowing that we are saved and, and that we are part of the body of Christ. Verse 17 says that, that then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. To, they, re, they laid their hands on them, the apostles laid their hands on them to signify that their, their prayers were answered and that the gift of the Holy Spirit was conferred, was given unto them. We have to understand that the laying on the hands anciently used in blessings 
were by those who blessed with authority. Thus the apostles blessed the new converts. Understand this, we cannot give today the Holy Spirit by the laying on of hand. This was a transitional period. But now when the individual, the moment that he accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, that he is sealed and indwelt by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. That is, until the day of redemption, that is when the Lord comes to redeem his church, that, that, that we're, he would take us back to be where he is. We find in verses 7, I mean, excuse me, verses 18 and 19 of our lesson where it states, And when Simon saw through the land on the apostles' hand that the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. When Simon saw that through laying on the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given. When he saw this, this really should have confirmed his faith in the doctrine of Christ. But it gave him no notion of Christianity being anything other than a another piece of sorcery in which he thought himself capable of being equal to the apostles and therefore offered them money saying give me this power also. He thought that this Christianity was just a sham just like the one that he had been pulling all along and so he offered the apostles to give him the same uh, power that they had. And not only just give him, but, but that he would pay him for him. He did not design that they would lay their hands on him that he might receive the Holy Ghost. No. He wanted to make merchandise. He seen that this was a good opportunity for him to make a fortune off of. So what he wanted is that they would convey to him a power to bestow the gift upon others. Not for himself, but he wanted to be able to do this for others. Two things. He was anxious to have the ambition and the honor of the apostles. He was desired to gain this honor for himself than to do good deeds for others. He wanted his name to be up there. And he wasn't interested in, in, in first of all, himself being endowed with the Holy Spirit, where that he might be able to be led by the Spirit of God so that his life, that his earthly life, his flesh, his, his flesh, his walk would be pleasing to God more so than it would be pleasing to himself and to his flesh. No, what he wanted, he wanted was fame. He wanted glory for himself. Just as the apostles, the great apostles had. But then he also, he wasn't worried about doing good for others. But he only wanted to do good for himself. Also, in his proposition, he insulted the apostles as if they were mercenary who would do anything just like he would for 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 money and and loved it as he did that that they were willing to dishonor the name of Christ 
just for a few dollars. So that, so just as he did, he showed that he had a very high, he was conceited, conceit for himself in that, in that he had never really had humbled his heart. He had professed that he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He had been baptized. He had been admitted in, into the church as others. But his heart had not changed. He was there doing the, doing the emotional singing and the preaching. And so he became part of But there was there was not a inner change. He showed all all the outward change but 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 there was nothing that was changed on on the inside and so we see that what's in the heart eventually will come out the heart you know we can we can make all the professions that we do or will with our mouth but romans say if thou will do what it didn't say profess with that mouth. If thou would do what? Confess with your mouth. There's a difference between a profession and a confession. A profession is just you saying something. A confession is a statement of truth. And so we have to do what? Not profess the Lord Jesus Christ, but confess the Lord Jesus Christ, where it is in our heart, a true statement, not something that we are just saying with our mouth. And so, what was in the heart eventually came out of Simon Peter, just like just like it it does in so many of it. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the, in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of John, the Lord had many followers. And Jesus told him, he got to the point, he said, the only reason why you are following me because of the fishes and the loaves, the, the temple of the thing, the things that fed their flesh. They wasn't following him because of the miracles that he did, which proved that he was God manifested in the flesh. And it's, Jesus told him that they must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And many of them, and many of them saying that this is such a hard saying that many of them turned and followed him no more. Today, in Christendom, we have many, we have multitudes that, that follow for the excitement. But how many will come out to prayer meet? How many will sincerely study the word of God, study the word of God that, that what, that we might be approved unto God, workmen and workwomen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How many of us are willing to, to endure, to, to not only to believe what Christ say, but also to suffer for his sake. No, what's the miracles and, and, and the things that we can get, but when it comes time for us to endure hardship as good soldiers, no, we turn and we walk away. Because what? Our heart is not right. Verses 20 and 23 of our lesson states, But Peter said unto him, Thou money perish with thee, because thou because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. Thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased. This wicked thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. With money. Today. Today, if 
if we would turn on the, the airways, the airways are 